Welcome back. It was an enormous celebration in Tiananmen Square this week, marking the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. Amid growing tensions with the United States, President Xi Jinping gave a rousing speech warning that China will not allow, quote, sanctimonious preaching or bullying from foreign countries, saying this, quote, anyone who dares try to do that will have their heads bashed bloody against the Great Wall of Steel forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people. Wow. Join me right now is China expert and the author of China's Vision of Victory, Dr. Jonathan Ward. And Jonathan, it's great to have you this weekend. Uh, your book laid all of this out, China's Vision of Victory. Give us your takeaways from the Xi Jinping speech and this celebration around 100 years of rule. Yesterday was about the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. That was the, the catchphrase that they're using throughout the entire thing. He's making it absolutely clear that the central mission of the Communist Party of China is the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. And what that means is for China to become ultimately the dominant force on the planet. Um, you know, and, and the way that they see this, and this is where some of the language is incredibly interesting. Um, they talk about the opium wars. You know, during the opium wars in the 1840s, our civilization was, you know, became dust. Our people were humiliated. Our country was humiliated. You know, now we will never suffer that again. The new China has been built. And all the symbolism that he's using, I mean, he's standing there in Tiananmen Square where Mao Zedong founded the People's Republic of China and said that the Chinese people have stood up. And here's Xi Jinping again, wearing the same kind of clothing that Mao wears in the same location, saying also the Chinese people have stood up. And then he goes on, as you pointed out, um, to, to, to use this quote, which really was actually scrubbed in the official Xinhua translation. But the, the Chinese uh, language says that um, the Chinese people will in no way allow foreigners to come in and bully us. Um, whoever vainly hopes to do this will bloodily break their heads on a steel great wall built of the flesh and blood of 1.4 um, billion Chinese people. So these are the real sort of, um, you know, visceral sort of rhetoric that the party uses with its population on a very regular basis. And the other thing is we like to have this image that the Communist Party is somehow separate, that it's just oppressive, that people really want it out of there. Uh, that's not true. Um, you know, in fact, many of these ideas are very uh, popular in China. There's a huge, um, you know, sort of persistent nationalism that goes on there. And the party itself is making the case to the Chinese people that they can do this. Jonathan, uh, the whole world should worry about a communist nation uh, being the dominant superpower. What does the United States need to do to slow this progress down? We're talking a lot about investing in Chinese companies and whether or not there is a ban in place. So far, any policy out of the the Biden administration has had no teeth in terms of really effectively pushing back on the CCP. What does the U.S. need to do? Well, we need to get our bankers out of China. Let's start with that. I mean, as you said, the, you know, people should worry about China's ascendancy. They should worry about the crimes against humanity that are taking place in, in Xinjiang. They should worry about the military buildup and the intention to take over Taiwan. And the fact that Xi Jinping, at the end of the day, when you listen to this speech, this is a man who's preparing his nation for war. That's what this is. And they've been doing that for a long time, for war with us, for war with their neighbors. And yet, you know, if you're um, Larry Fink, you're going into China. If, you, if you're Jamie Dimon, you're in China. You all want to be in China. Um, and, and, you know, it's the first thing the United States could do is, is get our own house in order and, we, and stop funding the rise of our adversary and the conversion of China's economic power into military power. I mean, that was another key point in this speech. The real problem in America is that America is sort of talking out of two sides of its mouth. On one hand, we have policy in D.C. From, from both administrations that have tried to um, form a new strategy towards China. And yet, on the other hand, look at the Greenwich Economic Forum. I mean, it's going to host a bunch of Communist Party officials and, and you know, promote U.S. investment um, into China and vice versa. Wow. So we're not really playing a coherent game here. We're not coherent on China as a country, even if we're bipartisan in Washington. That's our biggest problem. And as soon so as you stop that, as soon as we get Wall Street to reinvest in yep. the United States and stop investing in China, then we can start thinking about winning this game. Until then, you know, we're not there. So it's about money, Jonathan. It's just about money then yes. for those bankers. I mean, look, are they not Unfortunately. recognizing the national security risks? I would say that Wall Street has got, um, you know, a very detrimental approach to this because they can make money very simply off the rise of China. Is that good for America? Well, let's look at Xi Jinping's speech. It's a great point. Jonathan Ward, good to have you. Thanks very much for joining us.